she liked this get up it's a little bit much for filming a video inside my own room inside my own house that i haven't left for a month but literally no one has any reason to wear anything so consider yourself my special occasion My name's Alice, I'm an illustrator, sculptor, and welcome back to the Mushroom Nook studio. Things tend to get a little strange around here. Now, the video that I wanted to do for this week ended up taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. So I thought, actually, I'll do this instead. And it ended up taking equally as long. So I'm not sure what the moral of the story is. Now, I'm terrible at time management. That's nothing new. So here we are! <laughs> Anywho, your girl Alice here is not normally one to be jumping on the trends and the bandwagons because I'm a hipster and normally it's to my detriment. What I do have is a little rule. Never go chasing after the trends and the fads, but once in a blue moon, if one happens to be sauntering down my way, I'll get myself upon it. Hey ho, we're already going in the same direction. What could go wrong? So when I saw a lot of the artist peeps that I follow on Instagram have been joining in on this hashtag six fan arts challenge, originally started by Capricleon Art, I thought, hey, look over there. That's a nice, easy, fun, quick little bandwagon I can jump on. So I hitched myself upon it. I asked my Instagram followers what they would like to see. And you did not disappoint with the suggestions. The Throne of Glass series. Ginko from William Mushushi, Morris. Alice in Wonderland. Gerald to Bridget. Gerald to Gerald. 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 I didn't draw Baby Yoda. I mean, it's too late to go to the shirt, the shirt drawn Baby Yoda. That would have gotten me so many views. So many great suggestions. I took them all and narrowed them down into six. So without further ado, grab yourself a cup of tea, snuggle down in your little kingdom of self-isolation, and we'll take a trip down fandom lane, shall we? First, a look at my highly sophisticated setup. I start with putting down a cork mat to protect my light wood desk and because I have a cork fetish. Followed by an A4 journal topped with a scrap piece of grey board as the drawing board. I then tape my piece of watercolour paper in place. I have tried many a masking tape in my time and the only one I found to hold up and not let the watercolour bleed through is frog tape. Hands down, no comparison. And no. I do not wet and stretch my paper, because I cannot be asked. I also like to draw and paint at an angle, so I prop up my board with the highly technical two jars of goo puddings filled with coins and fake keys technique. Ain't stupid if it works. First up, we have Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, a boss in the game Bloodborne. I am what you would call a wannabe gamer. I love the idea of video games as a medium and all the storytelling potential within it, but I wasn't allowed to play video games as a kid, and as a result, now at 22, I barely know how to work a controller properly. Just ask anyone who ever attempted to play Mario Kart with me. So I resorted to enjoying them by watching my boyfriend play, like it's a movie, because he can't be bad at watching a movie. And one of my favorite things to put on in the background when I'm working are long-form YouTube videos that discuss all the fantastical lores and mythologies. And if you're talking lores and mythologies, the Soulsborne game will always be high on everyone's list. And not to mention, everything just looks so bloody gorgeous in them, like, all the time. Anywho, back to our lady. According to the Bloodborne Wiki, Lady Maria was one of the first hunters to join the nightly hunt, 
At the time of the game, Maria resides in the Astral Clock Tower, looking after the disfigured patients that reside there and guarding the secrets of the Nightmare, the fishing hamlet where the orphan of cause can be found. At an unknown point in time, Maria gave up her beloved weapon, tossing it down a well when she could no longer stomach it, and seemingly killed herself. Her consciousness was then pulled into the hunter's nightmare. The Orphan of Cost, by the way, was another suggestion to be painted, but I got too intimidated. Have you ever painted a placenta that can also be used as a club? Get back to me when you have. Second up is another video game character, but he used to be a book character and is now also a TV show character. And it is the TV show character that I'm painting this time, because it's an open secret that I've had a celebrity crush on Henry Cavill since the good old days when he was Charles Brandon on the Tudors. The original Witcher is a fantasy series of novels and short stories written by Polish author, I'm so sorry, Andrzej Sapkowski. The series revolves around the titular Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. If you want to be terribly reductive about it, think of the Witcher as a medieval high fantasy version of the X-Men. They have enhanced powers, in the case of the Witcher, the power was made for a specific purpose, but instead of being embraced by society for being cool superheroes, they are outcasted for their otherness. If you're Geralt of Rivia, you brood, begrudgingly go on monster slaying quest, bad sexy ladies, brute some more, and accidentally befriend a flamboyant bard. Oh, and you also take a lot of baths. Like, a lot of baths. You are very, very keen on your hygiene. I'll be honest with you, at some point during this painting, I gave up trying to capture Henry Cavill's likeness. So this is just Geralt. Pure Geralt. Who doesn't want that? Also, by the way, has anyone discussed the costumes in The Witcher, both the game and the show, because what's going on there? <laughs> like, who can I talk to? I like to have a conversation because what's happening, guys? I just want to know. <laughs> Now, this is a fun one. I had a suggestion to paint Mulan. I didn't really fancy painting the Disney character. Instead, I wanted to do more of a quote-unquote real Mulan. Now, Hua Mulan was definitely a real historical person, but as with many of the women throughout history, her life and achievements were very briefly mentioned in the Chronicles, and most of the story we know today are more legends than fact. Even so, I do like to examine it on a more practical side of things. Just think about it. For her to be able to convincingly blend in and live amongst the rough ranks of the Chinese army back in those days, bound breasts, rough heart work, zero skin care, if she had gone in as a great beauty, she definitely did not leave as one. And it does seem a bit silly to me. From the legends to the Disney films, the insistent that no, she was both because we can't have a female lead in a story if she's not also a renowned beauty. And as of this video, I've yet to watch the Disney live-action remake because historically I've not liked any of them. I do absolutely adore the cast. I grew up with them as a Vietnamese girl whose main source of entertainment were horribly dubbed Chinese period dramas. But my problem is, what's the point? You cut out all the songs. And yeah, all the Chinese actors are cool, but they're still speaking English. And there's already a very good high-budget Chinese Mulan film. Search it up. Go watch it. It's super good. We don't need this. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> with all that in mind, for my version, I tried to go with a stronger, less ambiguous depiction. With her in full armor and a strong, determined, war-worn look on her face.
a bit of a wild card here. I had quite a few suggestions for Lord of the Rings characters and didn't really know which one to pick. So I decided to use this as an excuse to broaden my repertoire and practice drawing a type of face I don't often do. I wanted an expressive face with loads of characterful features that I can really go to town on and sink my teeth into. And who better fits that description than the moss gatherer Tom Bombadil? It's quite a bit of a mystery within the Lord of the Rings universe. He wasn't included in the films, even though it's possible that he's one of the most powerful characters of this world, since he appears to not even be affected at all by the power of the One Ring. He's a jolly enigma, his big, happy, grinny face is a bucket of fun to paint. Watercolor is famously a very fiddly medium because once you've put the pigment down, more often than not you can't really remove it. And unlike with acrylic or oil paint, you can't just put another layer of paint on top and conceal all your crimes underneath it because watercolor is translucent. Now I found with watercolor it's best to be very patient and build up the layers. I like to block out all the colors first in these little pale blocks and just build up the tonal value on top and work the details in slowly. And I personally find it a very satisfying process. special request from my little sister. The Last Kingdom is one of the shows we've been watching together and it's such a well done show and so much fun. I still vividly remember being on a train journey with two of my friends back in uni. One of the girls and I started talking about the show and we ended up reenacting most of it while the other one of us sits there completely baffled. I mean, who doesn't want to randomly shout out, I am Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Okay, for the uninitiated, The Last Kingdom is a show following Uhtred of Bevenberg, a semi-fictional lord in medieval England, who is caught between his Viking family and his loyalty to King Alfred the Great, as he set about to build his dream of a united England. Father Bjorka here is Uhtred's mentor slash best friend slash foil. He was Uhtred's priest at Bevenberg and eventually became Alfred's most trusted advisor. He's the sweetest, cutest, most badass, angry, sweary priest, and altogether a superbly swell guy. On the show and portrayed it here, he's played by Ian Hart, whom I did not realize until very recently was also Professor Quirrell in the first Harry Potter film. That's pretty neat. Though I am informed by my boyfriend, who have read the original books by Bernard Cornwell, that he's very different in the books. But I am very fond of Ian Hart's take on the character. And also, everyone should watch Last Kingdom. They have a much, much smaller budget, obviously, but it really does fill the hole in my heart that Game of Thrones left behind. of Oscar Wilde's famous play, who commissions a portrait of himself as an attractive young man and later trades his soul for an ever youthful appearance. As a still handsome grey leads an increasingly dissolute and evil life, his painted representation rots and decays, revealing the extent of his moral corruption. I was so excited for this one because apart from the superb painting by Ivan Albright, <coughs> I would say that about 80% of all the Dorian Gray art i found on the internet depicts the handsome Dorian. I mean, the play is called The Picture of Dorian Gray. You don't need an excuse to paint handsome Victorian men, hell I do it all the time. And even if you do, there are so many characters out there that are more or less the same man. 
Why would you ignore the one of the few times where you get an excuse to paint the visual embodiment of excess and sin? You have here a respectable license to be as repulsive as you like. See also Salome, the other time Oscar Wilde gave artists a license to plunder the depth of human depravity. Meh. Having said that, I don't think I ended up going as far as I intended, but eh, it still turned out pretty cool. But perhaps this is a subject to be revisited in the future. a coin to your witcher <laughs> Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Did you see any characters that you like? Are there any characters you would like to see me do in the future? I really enjoyed this, so if you guys want to, I'm completely open to doing another one of these. So leave your suggestions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, have a look in the description. Follow me on all the social media. Like, comment, ring some bells, all that good stuff. If you watch this part of this video, then you are freaking awesome because it's all about the watch time, baby! Ooh. I will see you around here next time. <laughs> Bye!